Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play where we're diving right back into Elite Zoo North for episode 99. I don't think I have to make it any bigger a deal than it already is. Episode 99 today means episode 100 is right around the corner, which means episode 1 of Elite Zoo South is also right around the corner. It's going to be super fun. I am so excited to take everything we learned with Elite Zoo North and apply all of that development and that growth to Elite Zoo South right from the beginning. Uh, and I, I think it's fair to say that at this stage, almost all, at least most of us are excited for this, you know, big change as scary as change can be. Uh, but with that said, folks, there's been a, obviously, as, as you probably know by now, there's been a bit of a delay with me releasing episode 99. And, uh, of course, you know, I apologize for that delay. I gave y'all a bit of a heads up. Hopefully you saw it on Twitter or uh, on, uh, under the uh, community tab on the channel. But uh, I really wanted episode 99 to be the best episode 99 that it could possibly be. There's a few reasons for that. Now, episode 100, apart from something special about it that I'll mention later in the episode, so make sure you watch to the end. Uh, but episode 100 is largely going to be... A, uh, a a tour and sort of a farewell kind of an episode. I don't know if we'll have time for a time lapse with episode 100, right? In fact, I can tell you we won't be having a time lapse in episode 100 with almost 100% certainty. Um, but with that said, episode 99 carries a lot of weight on its shoulders with regards to the things that need doing. And so, folks, again, I apologize for the delay in the episode, but the reality is I just needed the extra time to make sure I could hit that bar that I wanted to hit with this episode. There is so much to do. Let's go ahead and right off the bat, actually, before uh, I, I you know, begin my or continue my rambling, I suppose, let's get the time set right so it's not the evening. We are fortunate to be blessed by this perfect weather, in fact, because we are going to be kicking things off with a time lapse. And we're going to be kicking things off with an extra long time lapse. Now, the episode length might end up the same as usual, you know, give or take a couple minutes. But uh, I wanted to spend a lot more time on this episode because, again, there is so much that needs doing uh, in, in, you know, time lapse mode. And, uh, you know, as time lapses go, uh, obviously, <laughs> they take time and time lapses as you make them. But, uh, but I needed that extra time. So I hope you all understand why the delay uh, was put in place. It's because I wanted to make sure that Elite Zoo North got a proper, you know, episode 99 before that episode 100 farewell. Um, now, with that said, I don't know if there is really much else to talk about before we dive on into our time lapse apart from the usual, which is if you've enjoyed this series, you want to see it continue, the best way to make sure that happens is by leaving a like and a comment down below. Again, can't stress enough just how important that is in uh, allowing me to gauge interest levels on various things. Uh, again, your likes and comments are what fuel ep uh, series like this. A hundred long, hundred episode long series is not uh, is not a common thing, I would say. Uh, but when there is so much interest, it's uh, it's a huge motivating factor. It lets me know people are interested, and so uh, I, you know. Again, I, I, I strive to entertain, and when you tell me something entertains you like that, I know I should do more of it. Um, and of course, there's also the fact that I'm still thoroughly enjoying Planet Zoo after spending so many hours with it. Uh, so yeah, folks, if you'd like to see many, many more hours, do let me know. This is, that's not, this is not, this is not okay. I, this is why, I, again, we've been around this bend, literally, uh, countless times, but... Didn't notice this last time. I mean, I guess we might have added this last time, actually. Maybe that's why I didn't notice it last time. But uh, but this is not... I'd be terrified to stand underneath that. There we go. That's, uh, that's a bit more right. Okay, um, I know a big part of me is going to want to uh, procrastinate on the beginning of this time lapse because it is such a big deal, time lapse. So I'm calling myself out right now so that I, I don't consciously or subconsciously do that. Folks, there's a lot to do. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy uh, everything that I managed to accomplish today, and I hope I'm able to accomplish a lot today, uh, or I should say in today's episode. Um, yeah, let's not waste any more time. Enough rambling. Let's let's uh, let's kick off what uh, what is probably going to be the last time lapse in season one of Planet Zoo with only Elite Zoo North as our. Uh, as our entire franchise. Folks, 
It's time lapse time. All right, folks, this is a very, very, very effective time lapse. I like to think at least. We get a lot done. We get a lot done. And it's a long time lapse too. So if at times I stop talking for a you know, certain duration of time, it's that I can give my voice a rest because uh, it is a very, very, very long time lapse. And I'm glad to have done it because uh, with such a long time lapse comes, you know, conclusions, catharsis, closure. You know, pick, pick, uh, pick your word, pick your word. Um, so first thing we do is uh, finish off what we started last session, which is all of these signs that I wanted to build. Uh, again, since episode, what, 10 or so, I suppose, uh, I wanted to have something like this. And, uh, and it's finally happening. And I'm, I'm super uh, happy at the pace at which they all get done and at how they all look by the end of it. Some things I'd like to obviously have different in some ways, but the reality is at the end of the day, I am dealing with a limited number of pieces. It's weird calling the pieces limited in number, but you know what I mean. Uh, now I did add the entering and leaving um, words to the signage. There were a lot of suggestions. O originally I was thinking of doing entering and leaving, but it felt a little strange to have like entering and leaving one area and then so in my head it was like okay well i'm leaving one area but i'm also entering another area at the same time right question mark so that's what my my initial uh, block was but then i realized well uh, you can have a neutral zone in between two regions and have a welcome sign as well as a as an exit sign uh so that finally tipped me over there were a lot of great suggestions one actually was to have like goodbye in various languages um on on the on the exit side uh, which I thought was great, like a like uh, on, on, based on a local language, based on the uh, uh, the region that you're entering or or exiting. But just as an example, you know, South Asia alone has so many languages, um, and here we have West and South Asia, right? Or you you look at East Asia. I mean, we've got so many languages there. You know, China alone, for example, has Mandarin and Cantonese, and I'm sure many more that uh, I'm not aware of. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert there at all. Uh, so I, I like the idea of it 100%, but I felt like it was going to uh, become very complicated very quickly and uh, and not in the in the good kind of way, not the good kind of complicated where it's a challenge to solve, but more like, oh, this is, uh, this is, uh, what's the word? I, I don't want to, I want to be very careful about the word I use here. Um, exclusionary, there. That, that's that's the word I'll use. Uh, and then on top of that, making some of the uh, writing would actually be quite difficult as well. Uh, not all uh, script styles work well with the construction pieces that uh, Planet Zoo have uh, available. So there was a lot, a lot to think about there. That was me just muting my music so I could start uh, cranking, some, cranking some of my own music. Because the uh, Planet Zoo music, as beautiful as it is while you're actually playing... Uh, for me, just kind of in in you know relative silence, just focused on uh, on uh, on building stuff. The music can sometimes make me feel a little drowsy. <laughs> so instead, I'm blasting like System of a Down and Gangsta Rap and all kinds of stuff uh, to to energize my my creative process over here. Uh, but yeah, so we finished uh, West and South Asia. You can see I'm adding the exits and entrances to as many of the spots make sense as transitions um, and trying to find those appropriate angles and stuff as well and, and again the appropriate spot means I want to make sure this was a bit of a challenge I wanted to make sure that all paths on one side of that welcome sign or exit sign were the right um, zone so for example this is a great one, for example. Uh, I think we work on uh, Southeast Asia pretty soon. Uh, but there's a fork in the road right as you... Over here, where you can see this little... Uh, I guess it's not a fork, but there, there's a, there's an offshooting path. And both of those paths are Southeast Asia, because one takes you to the Formosan Black Bears. Um, so I had to make sure that entrance sign was correct. Now that I'm talking about it, I can't remember if I did it correctly. I, I might have actually messed it up. I, I need to check when I put it down over here. Uh, but that might just be me being... Um, uncertain of myself. Uh, so yeah, building the Southeast Asian sign now. So again, the, the China uh, 
sorry, the East Asian one and the South and West Asian one, we did uh, we did last session, so there wasn't much to touch on there apart from the uh, you know entering and leaving sign uh, or or lettering, I should say. Uh, but with uh, with Southeast Asia, we get the first of our new ones, if I'm not mistaken. So here again, it was kind of tough actually. Uh, this one especially because none of the animals from this region have been given proper representation in any of the, you know, sculptures or anything like that. Um, it was a bit of a bummer because I wanted to try and approach things with a relatively consistent, uh, I guess, palette, if you will, so to speak. Um, and that just wasn't possible. And I didn't want, you know, I didn't want one of the places to just have a bunch of 2D animals as sculptures. And I don't know, I mean, I guess there's the orangutan or uh, Southeast Asia, but that was it. And that's only a 2D sculpture, or its face, which really doesn't fit the aesthetic I'm going for. So instead, I decided to make a, you know, overly complicated bamboo structure, because I felt like, uh, again, I want to do every place justice. Uh, I know, personally, just myself, if I was watching, and, and, and y'all let me know how you feel about this, but this is how I feel about this. If I was watching something like this, and where I'm from gets poorly represented, whereas everybody else gets something fancy, uh, I, you know, it's kind of like, oh man, it's disappointing, um, and I don't want anybody to feel disappointed. So I hope I've, I hope I've hit the mark there. Uh, obviously, I can only do uh, the best of my ability with every zone, uh, but to me, that's the the bar that needs to be hit. I need to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can uh, with the pieces I have and with the uh, you know space I have and things like that. Uh, and hopefully, that's uh, a nice way to make sure everyone's you know, pleased with, uh, with with how all these regions are represented. And I don't think it's necessary to have to be from a place to feel that way about, you know, being disappointed about it being underdone. But that was just the example that came to mind. I just want to clarify that I feel like uh, it's, it's, it's an across-the-board kind of feeling where, like, if a region is the only region that is underdone, it's a little like, well, that was a bummer. <laughs> don't want anybody to feel bummed out. Here, yeah, so here's a great example. Yeah, okay, I, I did get this right. So this leaving Southeast Asia sign had to be south of the bend that takes you to the Formosan Bears. That's off to the side over there on the right of, well, on the right of the screen right now. So I had to make sure the leaving words were on the other side of that junction. Oh, oh, do I cack this up? Hmm, maybe I do. Oh, wait, no, is that... I just... I need to check that area out. <laughs> I had to check that area out because I, I might have uh, placed it in, incorrectly despite all my talk right now. Because you're leaving East Asia, you go around the bend, and that takes you to the Formosan Black Bears. So you're not leaving East Asia yet. I need to fix this. And you're not entering East Asia there either. Oh wait, no, you are. Right, because Taiwan is East Asia. Wow. It's been a long day. So, <laughs> I did do it correctly. I was just speaking about it incorrectly. Um... Now, with that done, <laughs> with that problem solved, uh, let's moving on to uh, to correcting other mistakes of mine. Um, as much as I like the, the the typography on the ground that pointed you which way to go, it felt a little noisy. Ultimately, there was just too much signage going on, uh, and it was going to get messier in other spaces. So I didn't want to keep that if I wasn't going to be able to keep it consistent. So we got rid of that, uh, and now we're moving on to the Arctic Circle. Uh, you'll notice every once in a while I go back to the signboards at the beginning because I wanted to make sure I had the uh, the names and the divisions correct, which is why I keep kind of flipping back to back to that space to, to check what's going on. Uh, but yeah, with uh, with the Arctic Circle, um, again we kind of have a similar issue where there just aren't that many pieces. Um, we have a reindeer ice sculpture at uh, you know the, the 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 skating rink, but. I don't even know if it's a reindeer for sure, if I'm completely honest. And then we've got the polar bear, the ice sculpture, and the plastic sculpture, because it's not it's not snow, it looks like plastic. So again, kind of limited there, but I tried to make an interesting shape, I tried to use the, uh, you know, wood to my advantage. And the interesting thing again is like, uh, okay, so we call it the Arctic Circle, but the first thing you see, technically, is architecture from a place that is very much not in the Arctic Circle. So maybe this space needs to be renamed, or maybe um, the Siberian Tigers should be a part of East Asia instead, rather than the Arctic Circle. But the Siberian Tiger 
is on but it's a very it's a very conflicting situation that i was in while i was building this entire section i was like oh hang on a second where should this sign sit because either either we're saying the siberian tigers are east asian in in the categorization of this zoo or we're saying they're from the arctic circle and they're both however the architecture of that area is only one of these two things so i gotta i gotta figure it out i'd love to hear what y'all say i don't know if i'll fix it next episode but um Maybe if it's a quick fix, we can we can fix it next episode. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on that later. But uh, yeah, Arctic Circle time. Um, got the reindeer up top. You know, I, I, it's very clearly a uh, like a Christmas themed reindeer. Um, maybe just to me. Maybe I'm maybe I'm not so right. It's very different though stylistically from uh, from all the other sculptures. I don't know. That's that's I harp on this too much. I should stop. I wish there was some consistency. I wish there was at least one line of generic sculptures that was that represented more animals than they do right now. And again, in a generic sort of way. So wolves all together, bears all together, uh, things like that. And, and again, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's it's not easy. It, it's it's easy to ask for these things, or it's easy to want these things. It's not easy to develop them when you're in a you know in a in a it's 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 a business game development so i understand where uh things can can get in the way obviously but yeah there's our entrance there are two entrances and exits to uh the arctic circle done quite happy with how it looks um at the end of the day like it's got a nice feel to it i really like the blue we picked out for uh, for the words as well now here you can see me as i often do contemplating all the life decisions that uh, brought me to this point I was trying to figure out, okay, you know what? North America and South America is very densely packed. And my solution here, yeah, you can see me as well checking um, where the tortoises are from. And I'm like, okay, so, so technically South America is right by the entrance. And then North America is also kind of like right by the entrance. That's a very small section. And I was like, well, this doesn't feel right. It's weird to enter a zoo and be like, Welcome to South America. You take 10 steps, you're leaving South America. It's just like, wait a second, what? <laughs> That's how big the South America section is in this zoo? 10 steps? Um, so that felt very weird. And I was like, oh, that's not going to fly for me. I don't like that. That doesn't feel right. So, I, wow, I actually spent a lot more time on this than I, than I thought I did. Uh, so I decided to adjust our, uh, our region naming. And rather than have it just be, you know, South America, North America, I made it the Americas. Uh, gives us a broader spectrum of uh, uh, of appeal and stuff, I would say, or, or broader broader spectrum of coverage. Now, unfortunately, as I was touching on earlier, not all the animals have equal representation here. We do not have tortoises, at least that I could find. We don't have tortoise sculptures. We don't have um, Baird's tapir sculptures. Um, and the zoo doesn't yet have, you know, llamas and things like that that we might add later, but I didn't want to include them in the sculptures and in the, in the gates. Uh, in case they don't get added, or for whatever reason. They're not here yet, so we shouldn't mislead our customers, right? Um, but yeah, I renamed it to the Americas, and I was wondering about that at first. I was like, oh, is this going to be you know, an issue? Is this not appropriate? Things like that. But then I realized, I mean, we group South and West Asia together. We group all of East Asia together. Um, though I guess East Asia is... Uh... No, 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 this is fine. We group South and West Asia together. We do East Asia, we do Southeast Asia, so why not the Americas? It is a term that is used it has a meaning i'm not just making it up for the purpose of a solution and i was like you know what no that's a perfectly fair and legitimate term and category to use especially since the americas i will go ahead and say is one of the more i think underrepresented uh parts of the world in uh in planet zoo i think at least i could be mistaken i mean the dlc gave us four new animals or was it five four new animals i think um, we had a couple of animals from the base game, obviously, but, you know, compared to, like, Africa, for example, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, I have to, I have to do some research there, but, uh, nonetheless, it makes for a cleaner zoo, it makes for a more, you know, logical experience as well, it's not, you know, walk in, ten steps, walk out, kind of a thing, uh, and, again, on top of all of that, South America just doesn't have 
the uh, like the, the tortoises and the Baird's tapers, they just don't have the sculptures and stuff that I would need to build what I need to build. Uh, I am really rambling about this one, but uh, it's one that I felt strongly about before I made the change uh, to the name, to the designation of, uh, of the Americas. Uh, so I hope you all see where I'm coming from there and agree with the uh, decision because uh, it was not made lightly. How great is that gate, by the way? I am so pleased with this one. That bison sculpture is so cute. Um, they're, <laughs> they're possibly my favorite sculpture. They're up there. Uh, the shapes are really nice. The shading is really nice. Um, and they look adorable. They're so like nice and like rounded, rotund even. Um, but yeah, very happy with this gateway. And again, we're trying to maintain that... Um, uh, I want to say log cabin look, but obviously we've got sculptures and stuff over here. But trying to use, you know, the, the wooden pieces and stuff as much as possible. Trying to stick to that aesthetic from uh, from uh, from the region that we've been implementing since episode one, basically. Bringing it back, basically. Uh, but yeah, that was me just contemplating, like, what's the best way to build this? And also maybe stepping away from the computer a little bit. This is a long time lapse, folks. So, uh... I apologize for the little pause over there. Didn't uh, completely forgot it existed because how much longer the time lapse goes for afterwards. Um, it's funny actually how much of this I'm just like now remembering. Oh yeah, I did do this this time lapse because it was uh, such a gap from the beginning to to the one I'm recording the audio for it. Uh, but anyways, uh, we go ahead and put the America sign down. Now I, I'm pretty sure I can't recall right now on the topic of me not being able to remember. Yes, I do indeed put down the 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 americas sounds a lot better than just americas entering americas it sounds like an incomplete it's like entering americas what um <laughs> yeah uh so i wanted to do entering the americas because it felt more uh uh more complete and as for the color i went with that nice kind of forest green I tried to color code these as much as possible when possible how possible uh, and I felt like the uh, white and color worked quite nicely. I was very tempted, I think I experimented earlier with the coloration of the bison, I was very tempted to have like, you know, red and uh, white, just a representation of, you know, Canadian pride. Uh, actually recording this on Canada Day, uh, 1st of July. So uh, I was kind of driven by that, and I was like, well, hold on a second. I was just thinking about how I don't want to be exclusionary, and that would be very exclusionary, so so I, I, uh, I avoided that uh, as tempting as it was. But yeah, gotta just sign boards over here now. The Americas, both sides, make sure the colors are all matching up and things like that. Uh, and that's uh, feeling pretty good. Of course, we have to add this one as well. And again, over here, you can see how the Arctic Circle entrance has to be placed in a way that all the paths, all the separating paths, um, are covered by that one sign. Over here, I was a little worried, actually, but I ended up liking how the Leaving the Americas sign looks when its base is covered by bushes and things like that, or like the little mini trees. And over here again, just having this at an angle makes the uh, the visual experience so much better. Kind of zipped by there, but don't worry, we'll have a huge tour next episode, and that tour will uh, very much highlight all these things. Uh, that that was me just kind of measuring out. Like, did I have I covered everything? Do I have all the spaces? Have I got all the entrances and exits? I think I do. I certainly hope I do. It is a complicated zoo. It is a very uh, it is a very entangled zoo. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, entangle often comes with a negative connotation, but uh, there's a lot of entering and exiting regions. There's a lot of ways you can do it. And there's a lot of improvement to be made as well. For Elite Zoo South, I definitely want to work on a more kind of circuited approach. Um, I want to use... I've got a bit of a plan, actually. I've been uh, drawing out a bit of a uh, map, so to speak, of like how I would maybe want to lay things out. It's going to be interesting because... Again, we're going to try and do the uh, kind of safari, but also you can walk around <laughs> approach. I uh, don't know how well that's going to go, but uh, but it's uh, it's it's certainly going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how it works out, especially because the expenses of a ride right at the beginning. I don't know if we'll be able to afford it, so we'll we'll see. Anyway, now comes the time to really fill out some of the space. This is not the last thing we do in this time lapse, so uh, uh, don't like don't feel like uh, oh okay we're at the end of this time lapse. There's still <laughs> still. It's a lot more to do. Um, but this is something that I think I mentioned last session was very important that we do because it's one of the reasons why the zoo feels very, very incomplete is because it kind of just like ends at the edges. Um, whereas having these trees in 
makes it feel like it is uh, part of a bigger space. Uh, it feels like it's you know in a green belt somewhere or in a forested area somewhere. Um, it just doesn't you know fall off at the at the edge of uh, the, the zoo's extents. Um, and I think it has made a world of difference. I think you all will agree when I kind of finish this time lapse and kind of do an overview of it. Uh, but e even during this time lapse, you can really see how filling in the trees has uh, has, has has done a lot uh, for the zoo. Now, one important thing that I kept that I kept checking, zooming out and checking, was the shape of the outside. I wanted to make sure we had kind of straight lines. I wanted to make sure that the curves all made sense. It couldn't look too artificial from up on high because even though the guests will never see it from there, we will. So, you know, we, I had to make sure that I was uh, covering all my bases there, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. And like I said, that's not the end of the time lapse. Next up, the train stations. There was a lot to do, and I wanted to do as much of it as possible. So, the train station in our Tibet area, uh, I was thinking of doing like a hill station, right? That's uh, kind of what my original idea was. I looked up a bunch of images, I saw a bunch of references, um, a lot of inconsistency, which I guess is a is a good thing. Uh, the way I saw this construction was that the monasteries has been around for, you know, well, millennia at this point would be the idea. But the train station to it is a recent addition. Um, and so it's kind of like, you know, lightweight, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's cheaply made, but it is uh, it is inexpensive, and I wanted it to feel less. Uh, what's uh, uh, failing at words right now for some reason? There's a uh, oh, right. I wanted to feel less monumental. There we go. Uh, the monasteries feel monumental. They're these big structures, stone. Uh, the, the really kind of fancy looking and, and, and all that, but uh, but I didn't want the train station to, to compete with the monasteries, right? Uh, so I wanted to make sure it felt less monumental. I wanted to feel um, like it was, uh, I guess, uh, forsaking all worldly, you know, eases of life of modern life so to speak i don't know i i, I just can't get the i can't having, having a hard time getting the words to get the idea across but i wanted it to feel like it didn't compete with the monastery um hopefully and i, I think I, I think i succeeded there hopefully y'all think so as well uh now this is a lot easier to describe uh it's less uh the uh the thought process here is less uh i don't know philosophical i guess it needs to be an extension of the tavern so, you know, similar architectural style, pulling the old pieces in and, and just uh, putting putting the uh, walls in. Initially, I was actually going to leave it as is. I was like, oh, well, you know, the, the tavern is the train station. It's fine. And then I was like, no, no, party. That's the lazy way of thinking. So I came back in and uh, wanted to build a little structure. Didn't want to overcomplicate it. Didn't need to overcomplicate it. But uh, definitely needed to build a, a covering to it and stuff. This is something, again, we said we'd be doing since the beginning. That all of our train stations would have uh, would be built up and stuff rather than just being plopped down. And I believe with this one done, uh, we have fulfilled that uh, target. I believe so. Well, we'll do a quick little overview afterwards, but uh, it is really weird. Really weird. Almost as weird as how I said weird there. It is really weird coming back to these old parts of the zoo. There's that, that element of nostalgia, um, but also of judgment for my own self. Oh yeah, I like this. How, how do you like this little time lapse of us zipping by and stopping at each of the stations? I thought that was fun. Um, yeah, so that's all the stations done. The next step, I was like, all right, another juicy undertaking. We're going to rebuild the entrance. Because this has been brought up many times, and I was like, yeah, we're definitely going to do it. I'll be a surprise for episode 99. Um, I can't. And I'm really kind of bummed out about that. <laughs> but I vaguely remember being able to adjust the entrance and exit. But maybe I'm mistaken or maybe it was changed, but I can't put building pieces down in the area. So it is what it is. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but I was 
Yeah, I was looking forward to it. And I was like, all right, fine, whatever. I, I, I guess we're not doing that. Back to our other work. Uh, adding some more trees down where I saw some empty spots. There's no time to waste with mourning the fact that I couldn't uh, do what I wanted to. Um, but yeah, added some more trees down over here. I was just checking how much money we actually made off of these spots because they are uh, kind of in the middle of nowhere, but but they make enough money that it that keeping them makes sense. So I decided to go ahead and you know cover these up as well. Again, just filling in you know all those uh, all those holes, all those gaps, kind of uh, packing up basically, getting ready to leave. Right. Um, I decided to move this as well to make for a nicer structure in the area. It's not going to hurt its profitability or anything. I don't think so. It works a lot nicer as well. And then just getting this roof kind of to fit and getting the, the walls to fit in as well. Uh, overall, nothing too complicated over here, but not everything needs to be overly complicated. I think this is kind of more of a functional um, function over form, maybe. But uh, it definitely transitions you from one space to another. But what I wanted to do was I wanted this space to also kind of tell a bit of a story. So you've got the you know East Asian as well as the West Asian um, aesthetic there. And I felt like it was a nice kind of reference to like, I don't know, the Silk Road or something. It felt like two uh, two worlds collide, so to speak, at that uh, at that junction. I thought it was a nice touch. Um, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I thought it was a nice touch. Now over here, you can see I'm actually checking how profitable uh, Om Nom Nom was. Because I have a bit of a plan uh, that I'll actually deal with in a moment. Uh, I just got interrupted by my own self noticing that these toilet blocks were still exposed. So we got them covered up and changed their coloration as well. Uh, but yeah, so here you can see I'm kind of contemplating what my next step is. And between Om Nom Nom actually making a decent bit of money and the people around this bend over here being thirsty and hungry, I decide to uh, put down another little small eating space over here. And maybe it'll work for us. Maybe it won't. We'll see. Uh, lots of feedback as well with regards to how I've done food courts in uh, in Elite Zoo North. Lots of feedback, I mean, that I can uh, attend to while building Elite Zoo South. So thank you for that. Hopefully we'll be a bit more efficient next time around. Uh, but folks, this is, I believe, the last thing I do in this time lapse. I um, hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments down below. But uh, for now, it is back to after a few more trees get planted. Regular speed. All right, folks, we are back from that time lapse. And uh, I really hope the wait was worth it. We got so much done. And I'm glad to have taken the extra time to do it. Because really, the zoo just feels so much more complete just so much more complete i mean a lot of it was thanks to these trees we've added now it actually feels like i mean i'd love to just put a bunch of trees and fill the entire space up um but not only would that take a long time but it would probably just cause even more lag and i'm trying to minimize um my wasteful piece count so to speak as much as possible however I think the trees have done a very good job in filling the space out and if you get like you know the right kind of view of the area it feels like this zoo is carved out of like a green belt or something like that which is very fitting uh for the area that you know the the zoo is located in uh but yeah it's uh it's actually i mean just doing this uh slow panning shot itself is kind of uh overwhelming in in, in just how I don't know. It's uh, it, it there's this sense of pride, I guess, right? This is uh, 99 episodes. That's well over, well over 99 hours. Not just of you know viewing time, but you consider the uh, actual recording time because time lapses, right? Of course. Uh, and and I don't even know how many hours have been poured in this zoo. And it's so wild to kind of see it all like this. So personally, I'm I'm definitely happy uh, about uh, taking that extra you know day or so to 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 make all this possible before we say farewell. Uh, to Elite Zoo North, but um, I want to know your thoughts because I feel like that decision was uh, was better overall for Planet Zoo on this channel, though it might have, you know, stung to have that delay. If it's better overall, is that a net win? I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts, but um, yeah, geez, I'm sure I mentioned a lot of stuff during that time lapse. Um, or I'm sure I will be mentioning a lot of things in the time lapse when I record the audio for it. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to not, you know, belabor any of the things that I did there. Uh, it was a long one though, so I wouldn't be surprised if I'm already forgetting some of the things I did uh, in, in like the, you know, the beginning of it and things like that. But uh, anyway, 
let's, I guess, hit play. I mean, actually see the zoo in action. What I would like to do today is, uh, well, first of all, what I'd love to do is highlight the fact that um, currently, uh, over here, the challenge, like, okay, there's a couple of really beautiful things. Um, first of all, first of all, it was pointed out to me that the first animal we added to the zoo was the wolf, and the last animal we added to the zoo, so far, was also a wolf, so I thought that was beautiful, which was part of the big driving force of not adding more animals, because there is like a certain poetry there, uh, which I personally at least appreci appreciate a lot. Uh, and then of course on top of that it gave us the opportunity to actually fill out all those spaces we had. Moving forward with our, uh, with Elite Zoo South, I really want to balance out the addition of animals with the flushing out, or sorry, fleshing out, not flushing, that means something completely different. Uh, the fleshing out of spaces, because it, um, uh, it's important, I, I guess, for me to remember that we're not just building isolated enclosures and habitats. It's all about the full experience, which uh, we definitely kept in mind at the beginning and for quite a while. But there was a, there was a time during these last 100 episodes or so, or 99 episodes, where uh, it became um, a bit much in terms of adding animals on, like, it felt like it won every episode. Uh, so I want to balance that out a bit more and make sure we're not backtracking and, and filling in spaces as much in the future. Uh, but yeah, sorry, back on back on topic. First animal, wolf. Last animal, wolf. You know, poetry. And on top of that, how beautiful is this? How beautiful is this? The uh, community challenge right now. A northern song. The northern wilds are full of deciduous forests, the smell of pine, and gorgeous rocky formations. Can you fill these areas with bronze-rated animals from North America, such as the grizzly bear, the timber wolves, or the American bison? Question mark. Um, it's uh, what are the chances the last challenge, you know, over the course of of season one, so to speak, is directly related to our zoo in so many ways? Now, with that said, I'm gonna hit play. Let's see if we can't score on that uh, on that challenge a little bit. I, I highly doubt it, considering the fact that um, oops. Video thing. Oh, Looney Balloons. What? Interesting. No power, though. That's because of the um, solar panel here. All the mechanic. Uh, but yeah, I, I wonder if we'll get any bronze rated animals born. I mean, I think we're almost guaranteed minimum bronze rated animals being born when we have animals born. But that's the thing is like, will we see animals born in the short time we have left before that community challenge ends? Uh, episode 100 will largely be unpaused, so there's an opportunity there, but today we're not going to spend that much time unpaused. On which note, let's unpause. Um, I did save the game after loading in, so hopefully that will smooth things out as was recommended. And of course, with the construction we did today, our, our money is, you know, been badly hit, but hopefully we'll see that fixed. Now, one thing I want to touch on actually is I did add a couple more stores over here, and I think that's going to help out despite our conversations in the comments and stuff about how we might have too many stores. I think that'll help out because I noticed a lot of guests were thirsty and hungry and low energy in the area. So I really hope this little space helps. And it also helps kind of fill the space out, which was nice. Um, but, uh, but but I really hope that uh, purpose is served over there. One more thing is that we do want to make sure that our staff is all leveled up where uh, possible. Again, all these, uh, you know, lower level vendors, not only are they less efficient at keeping people happy. Oh, energy is so low, low workload. Yes, we've got so many low workload. I mean, I guess the thing is I need to assign. It's a bit of an undertaking to assign stalls to all of these vendors. That's maybe something I should do with Elite Zoo South right from the beginning. We went back and forth a little bit at Elite Zoo North of like what's more efficient, what's better. Um, so, I mean, I guess we'll... Uh, We'll have to reconsider this. But but anyway, uh, what I was saying was, not only is having a low tier vendor hurting a stall um, or, or hurting us overall, but, but what it does is it means that every stall has the opportunity of being served by folks who aren't as good at their job. Am I making sense? I feel like I'm not making sense. Point being, um, it's a good idea to have people leveled up. And, and I know it's not all vendors that I'm leveling up, but we, we might as well. And I know, again, staff um, wages, of course, will go up as a result of this, but uh, I, I think it's a worthwhile investment. At least, let's go ahead and do this much for now. I don't want to just do this all day today. Uh, I want to take a look at my animals as well, of course. Quite a few of these flamingos are stressing out once more. I guess that's because they are in the center space, right? Yeah, I could block it off, but I don't really want to. 
Um, I am happy now, I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm happy now knowing that if the flamingos are stressing out in the center, they're able to roam around in, you know, most of the rest of the space here, which is quite a bit of space. They're able to roam around and uh, not worry, uh, you know, and, and be stress-free. So I, I feel like we've done a more than satisfactory, I was going to say satisfactory at first, I feel like we've done a more than satisfactory job in making the flamingo enclosure uh, you know, beautiful, but also pleasing for the animals themselves. Uh, and that's important to me, obviously. I want to make sure the animals are happy, and I want to balance, you know, game mechanics. That's the thing. It's game mechanics being balanced against um, uh, animal happiness, I guess. So I, I, gotta, I, I gotta figure out where I, where I sit there. Um, now, the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that our upcoming... Um, that was a weird glitch. Um... I was so nervous recording today, uh, just because it's such a long, uh, such a large amount of um, uh, footage. I was worried about countless things, including, for example, my like hard drive running out of space for recording and stuff, which I literally just alt tab to check how much hard drive space I have left to make sure it doesn't suddenly stop recording. Um, because I'm not gonna lie, I'm 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 very nervous about that, <laughs> but we should be fine. Uh, anyway, sorry, um, the other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that when our, uh, when our tour is happening in episode 100, I want to make sure that we are not going to get interrupted by warnings of, like, inbreeding and things like that. So I want to try and, um, clean that up as best as possible. Though on that note, it was pointed out that our panda here is on contraceptives but doesn't need to be. Also, a very solid point was brought up about uh, finding pandas was that I should really focus on their fertility gene more so than anything else because that's the big issue with pandas is just numbers. Uh, so it's kind of helpful to tackle that problem first. Uh, but anyway, sorry. So we fixed that panda issue. Uh, a couple of stressed out tortoises, it seems. Hang on a second. Actually, on the topic of tortoises, I just realized something. Where's my enclosure door? I just realized something. The leap is still kicking it. Wow. That's wild, man. That is wild. That is wild. Still kicking it. All right. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. Lonely last, you know, several years. Uh, what else am I? What am I, What else am I thinking here? Right, 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 right. I want to make sure that we're not going to deal with um, inbreeding and stuff. So what we want to do is... Head on over here. Again, the whole maturity thing kind of doesn't work for me, does it? I prefer it by species and then making sure that our animals are appropriately um, put on contraceptives. This feels like a safer way to go about doing it. Oh, man. I had so many, like, newborns very recently. It's all about timing, eh? It's all about timing. And mine is unfortunately, or was unfortunately, off. Now, look, let's go ahead and put you on contraceptives as well. You guys are fine. You guys are fine. Humpy is, uh... Oh yeah, okay, he's been getting to work. Alright, cool. I feel like we, we did do a recent pass on this, so we should be okay. And where is our... Oh wow, we're having a second baby Baird's tape here before Xiania gets too old. And that's the first time that's happened. At least that's what I thought I saw in the notifications. Now we're fine over here. These guys are okay. We might actually be pretty... We might be pretty much okay because I did a uh, run of this recently, if I recall correctly. Hopefully we're fine here. Oh, that's a lot of Brazilian. Hmm. That's a lot of spiders <laughs> of a few different varieties. I gotta clear clear that out. But make sure that uh, you are also on contraceptives, please. There we go. And hoping for a smooth ride as we... Uh, do our tour next time. And, and I mean, beyond that as well, it's just good to have these animals properly set up, right? Okay, no major emergencies or anything. That's great. Down at G. Uh, the Gariel now. Alright, yeah, we, we definitely touched them up in terms of their contraceptives and stuff. I believe they're all on contraceptives. We do not need more Gariel right now. We've got so many of them. Yeah, I really gotta go through and clean up our, uh, our uh, exhibit animals, it looks like. Yeah, we're good over here. A couple of animals in the, uh... 
in the trade center, right? Hang on now. We got, yeah, yeah, two in the trade center. Hold on. One in the trade center. One, two, three hanging around. All right, go away is uh, close to the end of the line, right? Let's get them on contraceptives. Um, okay, we got you guys. We got you guys. We're all good here. We're all good here. We're all good here, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I've seen the flamingos um, have trouble with inbreeding, but I guess just to be safe. Put a couple of them on uh, contraceptives here. I also have way too many flamingos now, I would say. Like, we've got more than enough, right? Got a crowded space. They seem to be enjoying it, obviously. They like their big um, big groups, so they've got what they need. Oh, we good over here. Watkins and Gazan. Yep. Guys on contraceptives as well. Please and thank you. Red Panda is about to make. Good stuff, good stuff. All of our elephants have been fine for a while, though I don't think we've had a new baby elephant in a while, have we? Or I've just not noticed the uh, notifications come up, I suppose. Yeah, we've got quite a few. You're not on contraceptives and these... Oh, hey, speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. All right, beautiful. Beautiful. Pretty sure the pea fowl we solved relatively recently, but looks like we have a new batch that'll need solving, so to speak. It sounds like such a terrible word to use. Um... Down over here, let's get y'all as well. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. All of our monkeys. Osama, why are you not happy? Nutrition, hopefully food's coming through soon. I don't think I've seen them have any uh, inbreeding problems either, and I would like that population to grow. Though actually, hang on a second, that doesn't work like that. Rio, let's put you on uh, contraceptives. I was like, wait a second. The math doesn't add up there. You die. Ominous name. All right. Good here. Down over here, I believe we've checked these guys as well. Good stuff. Yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go at this point. L, M, polar bears. And they're both getting old. Both getting old. I'm put you on contraceptives. You guys are all good. You and you. All the kiddos. There we go. Good stuff. You're good. Got you guys already. Alright, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. It's down over here. Reindeer. Sure. And I want to just make sure we avoid any unfortunate interruptions. <laughs> Alright, I think we're good. You can show my you can you can tell my impatience is starting to show, I guess. Like, alright, how much more scrolling do I have to do? Well we're at T right now, right? Yep. Okay, we're good. Beautiful. Let's go ahead. Take a look at exhibit trading real quick. Empty our uh, storage here. Way too many animals. Go ahead and quick trade them out. A little bit of a cash injection. Can't believe I need those right now. And it is snowing in November. That's completely natural, actually. Uh, I thought it was going to be like May or something. Which, hey, in 2020, it happened. At least in Toronto. And this zoo is further north than Toronto, so... Wouldn't be surprised. Alright. Vet research. I mean, it's great that a lot of the research carries over for all of our construction stuff, but none of our animal research is going to make any difference at uh, Elite Zoo South, which is hilarious. Actually, hold on, that's not entirely true. Uh, some of the um, toys and stuff certainly have uh, value still, if I'm not mistaken. Diego, you're out. Guys, you're fine. What's up over here? Alright, Golden Poison Frog, quite a few of you. Not that many, actually. The decent number. It's not like, overly crowded or anything. These guys are fine as well. What about over here? Yeah, you guys are fine too. Oh, did I clear them out recently? I mean... They make babies, that's for sure. Definitely do that. Okay, let's clear that out. Now let's go ahead and clear a pair of you out as well. Oh, we got babies coming as well soon. Over here. Oh, yeah. Let's... Uh, Empty these guys out. Keep you and you. And over here. I'm so glad that we don't um, have to worry about inbreeding with exhibit animals. Can you imagine having to, like, pick and choose and be super... Oh. Oh, that's beautiful. Hey, pronghorn antelope about to have offspring. That's great. Just be bronze rank or above, please. Be bronze rank or above. I really ought to add a bit more heating. 
Oh, we have some cold spots up in here. I wish you could adjust the radius of the, um, the heaters. Like, I don't want to heat up the, uh, enclosures, you know? And I don't want to heat up the, the path either, either. I want it to be snowy. Do that, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, it's working. Probably like the trees are getting warmed up and stuff as well. Yeah, like I don't want it to be all clear of snow. It's so so beautiful. At the same time, um, I do want the guests to be comfortable. Yeah, it's, a, it's a tough call. Sorry, I'm distracting myself over here. Back on over to the job at hand. Head on up in here. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. There we go. I was looking for it. Right, these guys. Man. Just even being in this, like, tiger head, it's such a wild, um, experience. I mean, I can't believe we pulled it off, honestly. I can't believe this actually exists and looks, you know, I'd say as good as it does, but that feels like I'm, like, bragging and I, I, I don't feel comfortable with that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad it looks, um... Like it passes the bar there. <laughs> I'm like, ah, how, well, how's the, what's the biggest compliment I'm willing to give myself? I guess it passes the bar. Oh god, my skin, it's crawling. Okay, come on, let's get out of here. You two, go, 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 go. Great. Okay, beautiful. Ugh, god. Um, back on over to here. Back underground. We got a couple more animals there, and it looks like we are seeing some successes with the uh, the challenge. That's good. That makes me happy. Um, now hang on, is the I would like to know what else falls under the category of North American, because like reindeer, for example, right? Like that should be polar bear. We get polar bears in North America, so that should count. Not that we're I don't think we're likely to see a polar polar bear baby in a while. Um, they're both kind of old. But I mean, I'm curious actually about everything that's included in that uh, world. We're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, what's wrong over here? Too many spiders. Oh, he's too many spiders. <laughs> Always too many spiders. All right, there we go. They're happy. You guys, again, too many of you again. So many dudes. All right. Done. And over here, we've got, what, too many? Oh, no, we're actually fine over here. Most of them were in the uh, Trade Center, which is why the list looks so massive. And the Gila Monster, let's go ahead and get rid of you and you. James can go on. Hey, hey. Oh, ho, ho. oh god. Yeah. What are we looking at over here? How have we done so far? Cool. I mean, hey, you know, two animals. I um, mean, yeah, that's uh, that's great. No way. Oh, okay. Wait, no, no, no. Hold on. We really we've con we've contributed that much? No way. That doesn't make sense. Ooh, I'd like a pair of shorts. This summertime, four days left. It's actually, this is very telling how unfull this is with four days left. It's like, do most people not have a lot of North American animals? Or is it just more about like how many people are playing, things like that? We'll see, we'll see. I hope, I uh, hope we accomplish it. What's the deal over here? Yeah, see, we've got lineups already. And that's good. That means we made the right call with uh, putting that down, I would say. To immediately see traction, I would say we made the right call. Now, we need to get some heat over there, though, because it is cold, and that does not make sense um, for me to leave that space cold. If I can find a heater, fine. You know what? Fine. Have it your way, game. Make me open up your menus. Make me open up your menus. The wrong one at first, because why not? There we go. Get the heater out. And pop it down right in the middle. Oh. There we go. Come on. Let me check your temperature. 20 degrees or so is uh, more reasonable. 30 degrees, please. God, no. Oh, hang on a second. You can adjust the range? Wait a second. How did A, how did I not notice that earlier? B, that's got to be new-ish. I don't remember that from the beginning of the game. No way. Also, how could I be so blind earlier this episode? Well, I mean, I know how. Tired. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, hang on. What? This is new, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be. It's gotta be new. 
Either way, it makes me happy. Because, like I said, I can now kind of fine-tune the, uh, the, the spaces that get heated up. Oh, that's so much better. So again, the weird circles of, uh, of heat are going to bother me. Okay, five is maybe a little, a little too little. Um, yeah, let's go to seven or eight. Be better. Again, the circles will still be a bit of a bit of a bother, but better than what it was before, I suppose. Oh man, this is this is a game changer. And we can actually, I, I mean, it'll it'll drive up our bills, I suppose, a little bit. And uh, eat. Bulls are so. They make me so happy. I'll style you down as well, please. Down to. Hang on a second. That's a massive overlap we're going to have over there. We need to be down to here. Cool. Spectre is arriving soon as well, it seems. And what's the deal over here? Are we making more progress? No, still just the two animals. I'm not going to collect my rewards just yet. I like doing it all at the end when the challenge is over. Or we'll just do it, uh... We'll just do it with, uh... With the next session, with episode 100. Claim it. Because uh, I don't think the challenge will be up by then. Four days, right? Alright, um... Things are looking good. Animals are happy. Well, whoever lost that balloon might not be, but the animals are happy. That's what matters. Uh, a bit of a downpour, which is unfortunate, but, um... Overall, things are moving pretty smoothly. Let's go ahead and get a mechanic over here. Alright, oh, money. How's money looking? Again, we did spend a lot of money. Oof. Income is... It's March. We're at 120. I mean, that is not... That great. Not terrible either. Not that great. I might need to start charging for... It was pointed out in the, in the comments as well. Like, maybe it's time to just start charging for toilets and ATMs. Like, even 25 cents, right? Could go such a long way. Such a long way. Maybe it's time we uh, start doing that. Folks are queuing up here quite a bit. I mean, we could up these prices as well. Well, it's great to see actually how crowded these spaces get. If only they'd actually fill the trains up. Like, this train isn't moving. That guy just get tired of waiting. Or he just changed his mind. I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll see. I don't know why it's... Uh, well, I guess it's waiting for a certain amount of time. But if it's waiting, then why isn't it loading guests up? What's the deal down over here? We've actually got, you know, surprising numbers coming through over here. Compared to what, I, what we saw at the beginning, right? Maybe there's some... Babies are so cute. There's actually a very interesting video that I can rec recommend to people about um, about the macaque. By I don't know if you know about the series of videos called True Facts. The channel name is I think it's the Frank, like Z E, and then the name Frank. Um, very hilarious. Uh, maybe not entirely appropriate for you know certain uh, age groups. Depends on, depends on where you draw that line, I guess. But uh, very entertaining and very informative as well about the Japanese macaque. So if you look up Japanese macaque true facts, uh, it should pop up. And the channel name is The Frank. Uh, highly entertaining. I just watched it the other day myself, and it's just one of my favorite like ongoing long-term series on YouTube. Uh, with not a very consistent release schedule, if I recall correctly, but uh, but when they drop, they're amazing. And actually, on the topic of videos I can recommend, uh, I'm going to actually pin uh, another one of my videos in the comments down below. Uh, I had the opportunity to do a video about one of my favorite games from my childhood. And it was funny, actually, making that video made me realize just how much of an impact this one game has had on everything I do as far as playing video games is concerned in, in terms of how focused I am on the role play aspect, how important history is to me, how important, um, you know, just information is to me. It, it was it was really quite interesting because I always knew that my, that, you know, a huge part of who I am is a result of the video games I've played through my life. Uh, but making that video made me really realize 
uh, how how much this one particular series uh, has impacted me. And I just thought uh, I'd share. I thought some of y'all might be interested in, in, in seeing something about a slightly different game. Again, I always only mention videos that I think folks will be interested in over here. Uh, or, you know, cross-promote, I guess, is technically the term. Um, but, uh, but I think some of y'all might enjoy it, and, uh, and yeah, it's just, it was funny for me because it, literally it's a game from my childhood. Um, not like my, not my college years, I was a child. Um, so it was, it was a wild experience, and I, again, just wanted to share. Oh, another Lost Balloon. <gasps> the Lost Balloon colors were red and yellow. Like the channel colors. This is all coming together very nicely. This is a very poetic, um, like, you know, penultimate episode, as it were. We're doing pretty well as well. I mean, like, okay, we're not like... It's not like we have a hundred animals born over here, but two is, is you know, two better than, than I was expecting. Do we have any more pregnant, um... And you're getting old. Alpha here is getting old. I, I believe, though, there are other uh, options. I believe we did bring in a new male, so we're not going to have to worry about that for a while. Like a replacement over here. What about our Baird's tape here? What, did I, what was the notification I saw there? I could have sworn we had a new baby. They're so cute. Yeah, we did. What are your stats like? Oh, damn. Those are pretty good stats. Those are pretty good stats. And what about our, uh, well, I guess the other thing, right, right, right. It's got to be bronze at minimum, right? So it's very possible some of the animals we're getting are not bronze. Now, hang on. It says bronze level. Does that mean silver doesn't count? That, that would be kind of silly. <laughs> I doubt that's the case. What's the deal over here? No. Olivia. Infertility. Lots of babies here. Why not just tell me they're ranking over here as well? Yeah, like a lot of our bison are, you know, low-ish appeal. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to cost us a couple of, uh, of, of, of births, I guess, for the purpose of this challenge. We'll see. We'll keep an eye out on it. Uh, we'll keep an eye out on it. But folks, things are looking pretty, pretty. Oh my god, it is May and it is snowing in May. I was going to say, hopefully the snow goes away soon because, uh, I would like to call it a session. Uh, I would prefer to call it a session in nice weather, but you know what? It's fine. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Next session is episode 100, but it's not going to be a regular episode. Folks, I believe for the first time this year, I'm going to be live streaming. I'm really excited for it. Uh, it's going to be a live-streamed episode 100. It's going to be a live-streamed farewell. That's the uh, special announcement that I wanted to mention. And there's something on top of that that will make it even more special. But that I'll touch on, you know, during the uh, live stream itself. We're going to be doing our tour. We're going to be doing some animal trading. So, you know, if you're in the live chat while we're doing animal trading, then we'll be able to, you know, trade animals out based on what people want. And we'll, you know, we'll play around with pricing so it's all fair, but also so that everyone's, you know, picking up animals if they want to. So I think that'll be fun. It'll be a nice little community hangout session. The timing is going to be interesting. I'm going to actually live stream at the same time as a uh, typical um, episode release. So the same time that an episode releases on Saturday, which on the West Coast releases on Friday, right, because of my timing, midnight EST, um, that same time is when I will be going on live stream. Now, I will be announcing it on Twitter, so, you know, you can uh, follow my Twitter to, to stay up to date with that. I'll be announcing the timing there. Uh, I will put up a notification as well that'll have a countdown on the YouTube channel itself. So you'll be able to, you know, make sure you have the timing right. I'm not saying everybody will want to watch it live. I know it's not the most convenient time for everybody, but time zones are time zones. I'm uh, I'm releasing it at the same time as episodes release because I felt like that was the most kind of uh, fair way to go about it where uh, we stick to the same time. It'll be longer than an hour as well, of course. Just live streaming for an hour doesn't really make sense. Um, not sure exactly how long just yet. We'll see. We'll play it by ear because, again, for me, it will be midnight. Um, so midnight saturday est that means when friday becomes saturday on the east coast eastern standard time or eastern summertime is when we're streaming i don't know why i'm 
overstating this so much. But folks, it's going to be a wonderful time. I'm really looking forward to it. I've been planning it for a while. Uh, didn't want to mention it until it was concrete, but it is concrete. And together, we'll be able to say goodbye to Elite Zoo North. I'm really looking forward to the live stream. Hope you all are as well. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel, what I do more or less of, and how I go about doing it. Like I've said countless times, folks, I read through the comments. Makes a world of impact, just like this snowfall has. You can barely see, like, you can't even see all of Southeast Asia from this angle. Wild. Absolutely wild. Alright, folks. You enjoyed, you know what to do. Let me know. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers. <laughs>